Hey, it's Nicola, and I will show you today how you can actually, well, import your CSV to your assets. So I have a brand new schema that is actually created here that is that is being called users. And from here, I actually have this created from the te template itself. And I wasn't adding anything. I didn't add any of the uh, projects or any of the attributes. Some of the attributes will be changed. So I want to go to the uh, user management first. And when I go to the user management, what I want to be doing is I'm going to first export the users. And when I export the users in here, I'm uh, actually looking for the all of the users from the organization. And I'm looking for only active users. And I'm also gonna include some product access and the role itself. So this this um, export will be sent to my email address. So I will get back to you once I get get this. All right, so I've um, just downloaded downloaded the export of my users. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for the schema configuration in here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go for the import. And this is going to be the import with the CSV. So I'm going to click on create import, I'm going to go with a CSV import, I'm gonna name this users, but this is not going to be named as users because it's actually going to be using the name of your CSV file. So if I browse and I and I go with this name right here, same export users dot CSV. And this is something that you want to have toggled on where it says automatically create object types and the attributes itself. If you go for more options in here, you're gonna have stuff like um, encoding, concatenator, empty values. So the empty values are gonna be ignored. Unknown values, they can be added, but I'm going to say Ignore. I'm going to click on create the import. And when I actually click on the creating on the import, so this is what I have. Now I have the the mapping in here where I have the um, editing of the issues. Now when it comes to when it comes to mapping at least for the user ID, I would actually have this like hidden because the user ID would be would be some some kind of confidential information, because this is not really something that you want to be having in there email as well. So to have like at least like a username, and something or something like that, that is okay to have. Okay. Now, we have these things. And now what I'm going to say import the data. And now it's going to go through the import of the data. It's already being done. So now when I go back to the users view, now I have the export users, name of the export users. And this is this is what I'm talking about. So it's actually showing me. So this right here is not like readable information to me, it doesn't really mean too much to me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for the attributes. Within the attributes themselves, I'm going to go and instead of having the label on the user ID, I'm going to have the label in here. And it's saying this will set the attribute as label and will be the label for all projects within the object type. So I'm going to say yes. Why? Because I want to delete this. 
and I'm going to delete this attribute. So it's not going to be there anymore. So you can, of course, limit this so only the trusted users can actually see these objects and the object information. But then again, it's really crucial to know what, what kind of information you're going to be showing to the users. So this, this also is something that could be manipulated through the uh, roles themselves. We have the managers, developers and the viewers as the roles. So I can I can actually choose for the email to be uh, to be, you know, something that I want to delete as well. So I'm going to say yes, delete this attribute. And when this attribute is actually being deleted. Now when I go back to the, when I go back to the objects. Now this is what I actually see. So I've got to say for the Atlanta grant, I have like options for like when it was added to the organization, the status of the user and everything else. I can go for myself in here and I can see when I was last being seen in the uh, product discovery, confluence and all of the other, all of the other, all of the other things in here, all of the other products. That's what I wanted to say. And of course, this is something that you can always, always uh, change. You can always go here and you can always add a new attribute depending on the needs that you actually have. So for example, if you want to add, let's say a uh, manager and you want to specify who that manager is. So the thing is when you're actually doing that, so if I'm going to go with the manager and I go with the type, so this could be like either default object, user, group, project, status, and etc. So if, if it's the manager, it's going to be the user itself. All right. In, in here, when I'm selecting is I'm getting the groups in here. Okay. So the groups that are, that are actually being shown in here. Usually when it comes to showing, showing the managers, they're uh, almost, I, I'm gonna probably say 100% they're gonna be within the default users group. So this actually means that I'm going to go for my, let me see here first. Yeah, it's actually giving giving the option for the confluence. Not sure not why it's not giving it for Jira. Yeah, there we go. Jira admins. All right, Jira software users. User Jira users. Okay. I'm gonna click on add. And that is something that I'm going to have as an attribute right now. So when I scroll down, it's going to select, it's going to show manager. If I now try to go for the Atlanta grant, it's going to be there. There we go. I have edited that. But that is how you, how you can actually import your users through the CSV. And that is actually how you can basically import the data you using the CSV into your assets. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. See ya.